Look, ladies and gentlemen, we will get underway. We'll get a start. Um, so um, I'll open the, uh, the the agenda for the Economic Development Communications Committee meeting. Today is the open portion. Um, and uh, at the moment we have, um, ladies and gentlemen, we have um, Alderman Dr Peter Sexton on screen and we also have uh, Councillor Mike Dutter uh, and we are hoping to get more people here. We're missing at least one of the group. Um, but you've got, you got the quality. You may not have the quantity, but you do have the quality tonight. Um, at the moment we do have a quorum, so there's no need to co-opt and there's no one to co-opt anyway. So I'd ask if there's someone to confirm the minutes of the previous meeting of the open section, Thursday 24th of June. So moved, Chairman. Thank you, uh, uh, Alderman Sexton. Put that to the vote. All those in favour? Accepted Aye. as a true record. Thank you, uh, Councillor Dutta. There's no supplementary items. Uh, anybody wish to indicate a pecuniary or conflict of interest on the open agenda? There being none. Um, anybody wish to transfer an item from the open to the closed? On, there's nothing on the closed, so... Uh, I'll treat that as not. Um, I'll move to the reports and the substantive report tonight is the report 6.1 which is the Eco Economic Development Issues Paper presentation. And before I, um, I go to Marissa for to open, I just thought I'd make a comment as an opening comment. Um, I spent a number of years, um, I mean you're really, it's really great to have you here folks. Um, I spent a number of years as the chair, as the chief executive of the Tasmanian Chamber of Commerce and Industry, um, and in those years we employed and engaged a, um, an eco a staff economist, and continued that because that gave a statistical reference base for uh, everything to do with the economic development in the city, and most importantly, up until I think probably only 2006. Um, ABS, it was ABS, kept a lot of capital city data. Um, and with the global financial crisis, presumably, um, a lot of that capital city data was lost or was no longer captured. Um, so when I saw what was um, presented and what you have done so well in that seminar, in what was incredible for that length of time, I just thought it was really important data um, that that we've been able to collect. And I've got a number of questions, as I'm sure the rest of the committee have. But uh, first of all, I'll, uh, I'll ask your uh, mentor to, to lead us into <laughs> Tell us a bit more. Great, thank you. Um, chair through you. Um, so we've had um, Will, Fleur and Kim um, join us. They were here from February to June of this year. Um, so uh, Will and Fleur are from, um, well, are or were <laughs> from the Tasmanian School of Business and Economics at UTAS um, and Kim from the Master Planning Program. Um, so we had a really wonderful interdisciplinary group in, in the three of them that um, brought a range of perspectives to the project. Um, one of the major projects in the um, COVID-19 economic recovery plan um, is to create an economic development strategy um, and to reinvigorate that thinking within council. Um, and beginning a research phase was the first step towards that. Um, and the work that these three did was the first step of that first step. Um, so we were keen to take, um, to take a broader perspective on economic development, um, looking at a range of issues that would influence the future of the Hobart economy. Um, so um, Will and Fleur and Kim um, looked into what some of those issues might be um, and to um, ar articulate some of those issues in economic terms. Um, so there is a there is a section about um, business being a really in, important feature um, of economic development, but we also look at some of the um, the major issues in the city um, at the moment, things like housing affordability. Um, I won't give any more examples to steal the thunder of their presentation, um, but collective, collectively they contributed more than 400 hours to the project, um, and um, we've got uh, two new interns as well from Tisby looking at um, case studies carrying on from their work. Um, so they made a really amazing and detailed contribution um, far beyond expectation. They were absolutely wonderful to work with and produced such an incredible quality report. Um, it's really prompted a lot of thinking within our unit and hopefully beyond. Um, so I'll, um, yeah, I'll leave it there. But yeah, just thanks from the team um, to all three of you. And we're really looking forward to, to hearing the summary of your research. Uh, Councillor uh, Dutter and Alderman Sexton, are, are you satisfied and comfortable if we 
ask the group, the, the group that did the work to maybe highlight what they saw as critical, um, both challenges and threats going forward because it's, uh, there's a substantive amount of work there. So, oh, so we have a slideshow yes. coming through anyway. Yes. Um, so we might do that yep. slideshow. Yes, Evan, I thought there yeah. was to be a presentation. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Marissa, for those kind words, and thanks everyone for having us this afternoon. Today we will be presenting a brief summary of the investigative report that we've been writing over the last few months. There we go. <laughs> we do have technical support at the back if yeah. required. Ah, great. Yep, so we're all UTAS students who undertook an internship at the City of Hobart last semester to research economic development and to produce a report to inform the city's upcoming economic development strategy. Uh, this presentation today will share some of our report's key findings, recommendations and some of the student experiences during the internship. Uh, so the purpose of our report was to provide an evidence-based research on economic development in Hobart and provide a broad set of recommendations to support the city's upcoming economic development strategy. The city's previous strategy expired in 2018 and after COVID-19 lockdowns in 2020, there was a desire to create an updated economic development strategy. Oh, okay. Thanks. <laughs> Economic growth is important as it encompasses increases in employment, tax revenue, consumption levels and encourages investment into the area. Research and information gathered to inform our report comprised of literature reviews, statistics... Oh, it's been moving. <laughs> Here we go. How do I fix that? There we go. Um, the research and information gathered to inform our report comprised of literature reviews, statistics, data, economic indicators, and a range of interviews from internal and external stakeholders. Information was collected from a variety of academic uh, sources, including the Australian Bureau of Statistics, journal articles, and government reports. Our report identified six key areas impacting Hobart's economy, including demographic change, housing affordability, transport, local businesses, tourism and climate change, energy and the environmental health. Topics selected reflect our areas of interest or were main themes highlighted through research or stakeholder engagement. Cool. So our report identified demographic change to be a large influence on the Hobart economy and an important factor in sustainable economic development. This topic was selected based off findings from a variety of academic sources. To put Tasmania in perspective, 47% of the population is aged 45 or over, and this is 7% higher than the national average, and Hobart has the highest median age of any Australian capital city, currently sitting at 38 years. Our report focuses on the effects generated by a decreasing labour force participation rate, the reduction in income tax revenue, a decrease in the size of the working aged population, increasing pressures on medical and health services, and youth migration. Uh, research suggests that populations with a higher proportion of elderly residents typically require more resources and are less productive than populations with less elderly resources, uh, less elderly residents, sorry. Uh, for Hobart to... There we go. Uh, for Hobart to effectively manage demographic changes, uh, we suggest the following recommendations. To investigate opportunities to increase, to increase efficiency and supply of health facilities and aged care services, to identify policies that enhance Hobart attractiveness as an education and work destination, and to look into a domestic and international work exchange program, so to encourage professionals to work in Hobart for a specified period of time. Another issue identified was housing affordability, and it's a significant factor on the Hobart economy and was selected based off a variety of academic and government literature sources and themes arising from internal stakeholders. Currently, Hobart has the most unaffordable capital city rental market within Australia, and within the last 12 months alone, property prices increased 16% for houses and 20% for units. Our report explores the impacts of a lack of housing supply, employment shortages within the construction sector, investment behaviour that excludes first home buyers from the market, housing prices that outpace income and wage growth, and impacts on short-stay accommodation. 
Academic scholars state that housing unaffordability is associated with increasing living and business costs, which prompts the attractiveness of an area to decrease as employment and economic growth declines. To circumvent these issues, we suggest the following. To increase social housing options to support the current housing demand, to promote housing infill options to increase housing supply within the city, and to promote training and employment opportunities for construction trade workers and labourers. So regarding transport and sustainable economic development, many economists recognise that sustainable economic development is not only about economic growth, but also about social equity, spatial equity, environmental quality and so on. Transport and economy are closely tied together. The most important benefit of transport is that it provides people with accessibility to resources, services, education and employment. However, not all investment, not all investment in transport can be significantly beneficial to economic development. Some investment can result in deeper inequalities, further marginalization of disadvantaged people, and, um, and further degradation of environment. So choosing the types of transport infrastructure and choosing the types of the mode of transport for investment is also very important. In the areas where the transport infrastructure is, where the stock of transport infrastructure is already high, a further investment in that type of infrastructure, even a sizable investment, is unlikely to result in economic growth. So regarding transport in the Hobart context, we understand that Hobart has a strong car reliance culture. Hobart residents made a total of more than 100,000 trips and traveled for more than 900,000 kilometers using their private vehicles every day. The over-reliance on cars in Hobart results in suffered social, economic, and environmental effects, including traffic noise, air pollution, and public health impacts. Traffic congestion in Hobart also costs the economy approximately $100 million every year. A lack of car parking spaces in the CBD is another issue. So to solve the transport problems, we recommend the city to um, consider impacts of major investment in road infrastructure consider impacts of changes to parking space provision in the CBD and explore and provide opportunities to encourage the shift from private vehicle use to active and sustainable modes of transport. So we identified local businesses to be a significant contributor to the Hobart economy and an important source of economic growth. This topic was chosen based off findings from a range of academic literature sources and themes arising from interview participants. Small businesses underpin the Tasmanian economy, currently accounting for 97% of Tasmania's business community. The benefits of local business include providing employment, generating local wealth, being self-reliant, innovative and responsive in nature and promoting community development. There are five key industries underpinning the Hobart economy, with the workforce dominated by sectors that are largely publicly funded, including healthcare and social assistance, public administration and safety, education and training, accommodation and food services, and retail trade. Findings from reports and surveys conducted on the Tasmanian business community suggest the key challenges for local businesses include staffing issues, difficulty managing cash flows, overheads and obtaining capital, increased local competition, overcoming regulatory barriers and complexities, lack of business support and funding, time management, and a transition to an online market environment. While researching, we identified some emerging industries as potential growth opportunities for the Hobart economy based off the city's competitive advantages. These included Antarctic research and tourism, renewable hydrogen export and consultative services, organic farming and plant-based products, and an emerging tech sector in Hobart. So some key recommendations we made for local businesses include to continue to foster entrepreneurship within Hobart and investigate, investigate factors that support entrepreneurship, to offer or direct businesses to materials supporting and teaching general business skills, such as managing cash flow, budgeting and transitioning businesses to go online, and to consult Hobart-based small businesses to identify the specific issues and the potential opportunities to create an enabling regulatory environment. Uh, so regarding tourism, in our report, we identified two significant benefits of tourism. The first benefit is the employment opportunities for residents. 
especially for young and lower skilled workers. Another benefit is the increase in revenue and flow of effect in economy. But tourism also has some negative effects, such as seasonal impacts on employment. In the off-peak season, unemployment rates increase, and the livelihoods of casual tourism employees are negatively affected. Another impact is the increase in the demand and expenditure of city services when more visitors come to the city. With the services and infrastructure required for tourism, the cost to the council can be immense, and the challenge is how to balance the infrastructure tourism requires with the financing available. Short-term accom short accommodation also has some negative impacts on the long-term rental supply and rental prices as tourism can also impact social, cultural, and environmental aspects of an area. There is a need for balanced management and informed planning to ensure tourism industry can operate sustainably. Businesses adopting a sustainable model can be more favored by consumers. Sustainability can be a competitive advantage. Drawing from these, we recommend council to promote off-peak tourism, encourage the consumption of local resources and promote sustainable based tourism. So we identified climate change, energy and environmental health to have considerable influence over Hobart's current and future economy. Findings from a recent report from Deloitte Access Economics suggest that if climate change continues to be substantially unregulated, Australia's economy will shrink by 6% and have 880,000 fewer jobs by 27. This contraction represents a $3.4 trillion cost to the Australian economy and will severely impact industries across mining, manufacturing, services, trade and tourism. The City of Hobart has a significant opportunity to act on climate change while undertaking an economic development strategy and there are a number of opportunities to support this, including the development of a renewable hydrogen industry in Tasmania. As nations across the world strive to decarbonise their economies, the use of hydrogen produced from renewable sources is emerging as a important tool to achieve this. Tasmania has the potential to export renewable hydrogen energy to domestic and overseas energy markets and current scenario, scenario modelling suggests the business of supplying global hydrogen demand is likely to be substantial. The growth of this industry will be largely beneficial for the Hobart economy. As the capital of Tasmania, Hobart will have to be a key hub for the state's renewable hydrogen industry, having the capacity to contract with domestic and overseas markets undertake research and offer a range of energy consulting services. The City of Hobart has taken substantial energy efficiency initiatives across the city to reduce its energy expenditure, increase and increase its sustainability. In the last decade, the city has undertaken 85 major energy efficiency projects, saving over a million dollars in energy costs between 2019 and 2020. These savings are impressive and further investigation should be undertaken to identif identify future energy saving strategies. Reducing the city's energy costs ensures a larger pool of funds are available to allocate to other city services, and this enhances Hobart's economic development while improving environmental outcomes. So, some recommendations we made include to continue to update Hobart's climate change adaption strategy in line with recent climate data, economic modelling and advancements in technology, to support the uptake of the Tasmanian renewable hydrogen industry and market Hobart's capacity as a key consultancy and services hub and to undertake energy efficiency renovations on city properties and provide strategic workshops to local businesses to share cost reduction strategies while supporting positive economic and environmental outcomes. So some time constraints um, due to our internship presented restrictions on the number of issues included within our report and some themes we um, identified to uh, investigate further research include educational attainment levels, technology, academic research, international students, shifts in power from government to private corporations, rise of misinformation and a lack of consumer information, level of government spending to stimulate economic, economic growth, public transport, active transport and tourism and hotel development. So in conclusion, Hobart's economy is complex and the growth of the city and its industries is influenced by a broad range of factors. Overall, the city is in a promising situation to leverage its key op opportunities to create a strong, resilient and diverse economy that can support the welfare of its residents and communities. An economic development strategy produced by the City of Hobart should encompass a wide ar array of strategic policies 
that enable investment, innovation and growth in line with a shared community vision outlined in previous strategies. In terms of the student experience, the internship itself was really beneficial for both the students and the City of Hobart. It was a fantastic opportunity to be able to work in a professional setting and to produce a local government report. We really enjoyed coming into the office every week and working with Marissa and the great people in the Community Life Division. Economic development is a broad area, so it was quite challenging to write such a large report in the time given, but by utilising schedules and planners early on, we were able to keep on track and finish the report by the deadline. So thanks everyone for watching today. We hope you enjoyed the presentation and we hope you enjoy reading our report. Thanks. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, I'll open, the, I'll open the meeting up to the committee, the, th the committee of three of us, plus officers that would like to ask questions. Uh, so first of all, uh, Councillor Dutta. Uh, th thank you very much, Chair. Uh, th thank you for the report, and I would uh, endorse uh, the report as being very detailed, uh, thorough, and uh, you know, it's quite a good quality with uh, academic emphasis. So thank you so much for that and the time and effort you've put into it. Uh, just uh, a question to begin with. There is a, a towards the end, uh, you mentioned about additional topics that needs to be researched further, and you mentioned international students. Uh, what, what do you uh, mean by that, and what, what would constitute that research as far as international students are concerned? Um, yep, so um, uh, we believe that international students uh, are an important consideration on the Hobart economy. Um, uh, we, we identified um, education early on as um, uh, uh, one of the um, key um, ad potential advantages of the Hobart economy. Um, and we, we thought that um, a comprehensive um, economic report would be one that considers um, the, um, the effects of um, international students on the Hobart economy, uh, what draws them in, um, what is the infrastructure required to attract in international students and, and to, to quantify the, the benefits they bring to the economy, essentially, Councillor. You're on mute, Mike. Well, just a follow-up question, if you don't mind. Uh, with, with regards to international students and uh, the contribution to the uh, uh, economy in Hobart, would you have any figures on that for the, say, 2019-2020 uh, uh, year or anything recent? Uh, we have um, something from 2017. Um, we wrote that international education accounted for $376 million um, in the Tasmanian economy in 2017, um, but we did not identify anything um, more recent in the last year. Uh, I think I can probably help Councillor Dutta um, in, the, in, the, in the 2019 period well, oh, maybe up to financial year 2019-20, there were 13,300 students uh, and the economic input was uh, around 700 million. So it rose considerably over that period of two years and that, that amount has, uh, has dropped off. But interestingly enough, um, around 60% of the international students um, aren't represented at the University of Tasmania but rather at the 23 vocational colleges plus TAFE that exist in the city. So um, at the moment the international students are still arriving but they're coming from other states um, as a result of having done an undergraduate degree in other states. Um, just before I, I defer to Alderman Sexton, um, it would be an extremely valuable exercise to do a to do a, a study of the impact of international education on the Hobart economy for a number of reasons. Um, one of which is you referred to the homelessness and the housing critical shortage. 
which is probably not as bad as it was because you see a lot of rental signs up because people have uh, people aren't moving and people the borders are closed but what's happened at a state government level is that they've encouraged there is a thing called state sponsorship which is a, uh, a certain number of percentage points for students uh, who wish to become a resident of this country and one of the factors in that is that they are in that they are in, uh, that they are educated and then work in COVID related industries so I'm talking about Health and uh, health, IT, freight and logistics, community service. We have a, a critical issue that the housing shortage, or indeed the second requirement of the state government, which is we will look more favourably at your application if you are living outside of Hobart, has meant that these students are arriving in places like Swansea, Burnie, all over the show, where there are no placements for them. So all of them. Thousands of them um, are now, sorry, a, at least 8,000 of them are now looking at community service uh, in, in Alderman Sexton's other life in the medical area. Uh, there are hundreds of students now who have finished their theory and who can't get a placement in aged care. So exactly what you said in terms of the ageing profile, the medium age, the difficulty of getting a workforce, we, uh, I don't know whether any of you, you all look qualified and capable of doing your PhD, but someone needs to do some work pretty quickly on the fact that we have this tsunami of the ageing demography, and yet our own youth have, until COVID, been travelling and not always coming back. The international youth and international education provided that young workforce. But what we've done, we've failed to look after them sufficiently and we're now finding that a great number of them, Councillor Dutta, are spending thousands of dollars on being educated and living here only to go home without their qualification because they can't get a miserable 120 hours voluntary service. So there are some critical issues going on and this is even in aged care where the nearest, the earliest placement in one place in Sorrell for an aged care graduate is 2023. So that's for 120 voluntary hours with insurance. So it is a considerable problem. Um, Alderman Sexton. Thank you, Chairman. Um, uh, congratulations on your report. I enjoyed it and I enjoyed the presentation. One, uh, as we know, um, one of the, uh, there are many effects of the pandemic, but um, there are two effects of the pandemic at the moment, which are uh, highlight, uh, highlighted. One of them, of course, is um, the, need, the increasing requirement to work from home and fear. Um, we, we know with what's happening with what's happening in both Victoria, uh, to a lesser extent, but especially in New South Wales, that fear is a major factor, um, and of course, the requirement to work from home is a major factor. So, did you have an opportunity to look at the effect of the pandemic, particularly those two elements, on? decisions about where people may wish to live, where they may wish to study, and where they may wish to work, and whether that's likely to impact Tasmania, because anecdotally, we are getting, I am getting increasing um, indications that people are seriously thinking about moving here because we have a moat. And that, of course, is going to affect a whole range of things. It may be, there will be beneficial effects for the economy, but there will also be negative effects on on the economy through the lack of housing and all that sort of thing. So, was it was that a, was that an aspect of the the pandemic that you were able to look at? We didn't specifically focus on we didn't specifically focus on the direct outcomes of COVID nineteen. We looked in very broad sense. Um, however, as you say, people are looking to come or maybe looking to come to Tasmania uh, if they can work uh, remotely. Um, and this would be, has good or bad effects, like you said, we have to manage them correctly. Um, but it might help with the bringing down the ageing demographics, but it could bring up housing prices as more demand comes in. So it just has to be very balanced, but we did not focus on it specifically. So that is something that perhaps we, I mean, you said there's a number of other things that we need to do in terms of uh, follow-up research, but. 
given that the, the pandemic may have medium to long-term effects on the way people think uh, and act in terms of where they work, live and study, and it may well be that students would, don't want to continue to be locked out of their universities in, um, in states where the pandemic appears to be uh, Worse, worse to, to be controlled less than it is here. And so they may decide that they'll come here rather than go to a university in, in New South Wales or, or Victoria. So there are sorts of things that we could look at, but I'm sure there will be medium to long-term effects of the pandemic um, that we will need to take into account when we're planning um, some aspects of the economic development of the city. But thank you again for your work. Um, can I ask a question perhaps of the group? Um, a lot of the things you identified crossed over local government, state government, probably to a minor extent, federal government. You talk to climate change, we obviously have the issue of the de demographical tre demographic trends. Uh, we've got the problems of training. We have that un unknown capacity, potential challenges and opportunities of international education. Um, without, without being uh, trying to be uh, provocative, somebody needs to be in control of the ship and realistically you've named up a range of possibilities there's a heap of potentials in here if we were to try to encourage growth of the right type of industries or the right type of sectors to be involved here as alderman section has just said the moat impact means that this is an attractive place because a small business could relocate here operate uh, remotely uh, and its people could go about their lives basically unchanged from pre-COVID. Pre um, do you get the feeling, uh, how, do we, how do we both, how do we, um, I guess, um, capitalise on what you've done or because it, it quickly goes out of date, even as we just said, some of the questions that the committee have asked. Marissa, what, what sort of thoughts do you have? We're, we're, we're situation here, are we not liaising well enough with state government or should we liaise better with them? We're a major part of the economy. How do we how do we pull this together? Because we've got a huge amount of, of great material here. Um, well, when um, when the the group first put forward their recommendations, and we had a thought about oh, like along the lines of what you said that this could these recommendations could pertain to us at a range of scales, and um, and should we have a discussion about how they might be reframed to reflect like maybe the most obvious role of local government and and we decided not to do that mm -hmm. because it would give us the opportunity to look at their recommendations and think about and well what could we do in each of these spaces like there would be a temptation to, to say well we could just take on an advocacy role for for this one what does that actually mean um, so we we left the recommendations as as they were presented by this group so that we could try to think a bit more creatively about how how we might respond to them um, I think uh, that is something that's very topical for us at the moment in terms of how um, how we do do that intergovernmental work and, um, and where we can collaborate better and more effectively. Um, so perhaps even that's um, one of the sort of overarching questions that we can look at um, is how we can take a, a broader approach in that intergovernmental space um, to, to deal with some of these cross-cutting issues. Um, yeah. Uh, anything else from the committee? Chairman, I'm happy to move the recommendation that the report yeah. be used as an input by officers in the creation of a new economic development strategy um, and, I, and I, I, I guess um, a, a, perhaps a part B that um, officers um, uh, consider uh, more recent developments, particularly related to COVID, that might impact on the um, future economic um, development of the city. Thank you. Anything else from you, Councillor Dutta? Yeah, I, I just uh, just two very uh, maybe simple question. Um, one is, and there are so many other questions, and I'd love to have an opportunity to meet uh, with Larissa and a few of the others later to pick some of the things that I think is going to take a lot more time. But I just wanted to ask two very simple and maybe uh, 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 questions, if you have the answer. Uh, it was mentioned in the report that. Uh, in 2018-2019, there was about 5,000 people or migration or migrants who came in that constituted about 80% of the growth of Tasmania. And out of that, about 500 uh, in, in Hobart. And most of them were professionals 
in the area of uh, medicine or medical uh, area. Now, would you be able to tell me, this is my observation, I in fact observe, and from experience as well, that there are a lot more people who are taxi drivers, truck drivers, in cafes, and uh, so, so forth. I, I don't see the harmony in that, or you know, there's a different information that I'm seeing uh, in lived experience. That's question one. And question two is in regards to, uh, again, in the report it was mentioned that uh, elected uh, members were interviewed. I wonder who these elected members were and how they were chosen. And those are the two questions I'll ask, but I want to pursue that and a number of other questions later. Marissa, on the, on the issue of the elected members? I chair through you. Um, if so, the, um, it was... Well, these three were so wonderful to work with, so talented that we wanted um, to um, like have them interview many people, um, and it became very quickly apparent the limitations of their time, um, just given that most interviews take 45 to 90 minutes, um, I've, I've found, um, and then to, um, to take notes and to analyze those notes and factor them into the report. Um, we kept the, the number pretty small in the end. Um, so the group spoke with, um, with Alderman Thomas as the chair of, um, of this committee. Um, and that was the only elected member um, interview that happened at, at that time. Um, in terms of actually developing the economic development strategy, um, we're thinking sort of longer, longer term with that project that there would be more and multiple opportunities um, to have those in-depth um, conversations at, at elected member and other stakeholder level. Thank you. Well, if there's no further questions, um, we have a recommendation uh, from Alderman Sexton. I'll put that recommendation. All those in favour, say aye. Aye. Against? That's carried. Thank you. And look, thank you very much, everybody. We're um, going to proceed with our meeting, but thank you very much for all your work, and we wish you well in your professional and personal endeavours. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. It won't be lost, don't worry. <laughs> I'll move on now to item 6.2, which is the 2021-22 uh, 20, uh, fees and charges adjustment for the uh, travel centre, and perhaps get uh, the manager to uh, to comment or speak to it. Uh, well, I can speak to it, but we've also got Ms Gursky yes. here. If there are any particular questions, um, in essence, we had been planning a potential relocation of the travel centre, as elected members would be aware into the customer service centre. As a result, the fees and charges for the travel centre that you previously approved were based on that move going ahead. Um, there are a number of reasons why that move is now not going ahead at the moment and probably will be delayed for some time. Um, so we need, the, the, some of the advertising that we do is very much site specific in terms of locations in the footprint of the building and in the window. Um, and we're able to charge accordingly because some of those are premium spaces. So on the basis that we actually are now staying for the time being in the Davie Street building, um, it was necessary administratively to come back to you just with some updated fees and charges. Chairman, I'm happy to move them, but I, but I also would be interested to know what the reason is that you're not moving. Chair, through you, uh, at the moment, the move is probably going to be more expensive than we had originally anticipated, um, and we're just waiting on a more formalised uh, quantity surveyors report for that. Um, but it will be a matter, quite simply, of whether we can fund it at the moment. Okay, thanks. Okay. Um, uh, nothing, Councillor Dutta, you're okay with the. Yeah, I'll give it a thing. Thank yep. you. Uh, I'll put the recommend. I'll put the um, recommendation. All those in favour, say aye. Again, aye. that's carried. Thank you. Um, we'll now move to the uh, status report. Somebody might uh, move that. Move that the information be received and noted, Chairman. Thank you. I'll put that. Uh, anything you wish to raise, Councillor Dutta? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll put that uh, to the meeting. All those in favour, say aye. Aye. Again, that's carried. Uh, questions without notice on the open. Yeah, just a question. Uh, is it possible for me to uh, maybe meet uh, uh, 
uh, you know, whoever is responsible for this particular report, because there are quite a number of other questions that I have, and mm -hmm. I'd love to pursue it further. Yeah, Chair, through you, absolutely, yes, it is. Um, it won't be with the interns because they have finished and they've all got moved back into either uni or paid employment, but absolutely with Marissa and Luke, um, definitely, you. Councillor Dutta. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, we, there's, if someone could uh, move that we go into the closed. Um, move, no, Chairman. Nothing on it. Um,